Alrighty, welcome back. Game two, but probably we'll put this as game one. As you'll see, the game two listed is a disaster. Record a super good intro into Turbo Feeder combo. This time up against Tarek, Akali, Vayne, Senna, and Gwen. And our game plan remains the same. We're going to be clearing towards topside so that we can play for those Void Grubs on the early spawn. And then generally just trying to get more camps than the enemy. Nocturne's bread and butter of far more camps is Stay True. Has stayed true into Season 14. But now you have access to the Void Grubs at, what is it, 5 minutes whenever they spawn. And the Void Grubs give you more XP. So if you're uncontested on those, that's a free extra camp. And then if you're contested, well, you have something to fight on. And you can fight on at level 5 while also having good component items if you farm your camps in the correct order. And then also recall and spend your gold rather than, I don't know, staying on the map and messing around. And then I know there's going to be a beginner watching. So it's like, yeah, on Nocturne, we're not going to be skipping our camps ever. Not even once, man. Not even a single time. Always farm every single one of your camps and then nothing will go wrong. But when do I stop farming my camps? When you're stronger than the enemy and you have a reason to skip them. But generally... We farm, and then we fight, and then if we win the fight, we get more gold and XP. And with that gold, you get more damage, as well as more tankiness. And it's the same deal with the XP part. You get more damage, but you also get more tankiness per level. Per level, you get HP and you get armor. You also get points in your abilities. You also get AD. So as a bruiser champion like Nocturne, it's all about getting both. It's not one or the other. And that's why skipping camp sucks on Nocturne, because you're giving up this for that, and that is never worth it. Alrighty, let's finish up our clear here. I mean, get into the river and try to get that scuttle crap. Taric jungle is probably good into Nocturne, if I had to guess. He matches your smack, smack, smack whenever you're fighting. And then he also has his ulti, which totally shuts down our engage. But I'll believe it when I see it, okay? Even if Taric jungle is strong, the players playing it have to be weird guys, okay? Smack. Smack smite. You want to be clean with that smite. There could always be a bad guy in this bush. So top lane's pushed in. Mid lane's not in a good spot to gank. Immediate reset. Back to the bot side. Going to be building experimental hex plate. This bad boy gives us a lot. Let's get a control word too. This, guy, this bad boy gives us a lot of ultimate ability haste. And then where you can build the noon quiver early, this also increases your clear speed. If you can get a double scuttle into two camps off the reset... Or before your first reset, then you can have Noon Quiver, and that gives you 20 extra damage whenever you're hitting the camps. Oh, you want to fight, Tarek? I have items. Hello. W, Q, E, moving. Auto, 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 auto. Well, that was easy. We only got an assist, but I'll take it. Tarek is dead, and I'm on the Gromp. That's a winning jungle maneuver. Another noob alert. I'll tell you one thing about this season. People are roaming around like dummies. Q, smite. And we're not skipping for Akali here. She can back out. My camps are up. The camps are guaranteed. And I'm pathing towards those Void Grubs. I get level 5. I have two Long Swords. And if I'm on those Grubs as they spawn, then Tarek is going to be worse off. Smack. Alrighty, nice. So I'm level 5. I can skip my raptors here and then move right towards the void grubs. Be better if I had smite, sure. But even if you just get one of the void grubs, it gives you XP that you otherwise wouldn't have had. So he hits the scryer's bloom and then is looking to gank top. Jace can come to the play here. They're going to have to chase Fiora a long time. And then we have the flank. The flank is always the good position. Auto, auto, E, auto, auto, Q, W, auto, auto, auto. 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 Lol. Your champion sucks. Nice. Now we definitely get the Void Grubs. Whoa! A Senna! Run away! Oh man, Q. So we can at least get one of these with our time here. We can at least get one of them. My smite's coming up, but the Akali's here, so I'll just go back to my camps. Getting the Void Grubs is cool, but... When the level 3 Senna support roams, we can't get them. But I mean, that's an important thing to know, too. Whenever they show up, don't just try to beat your head into it. Leave! Go to the camps! Farm something, man! Get a grip! Wake up! I'm gonna kick you out of this house if you don't have a job in two days, buddy!
though beware. I'm gonna do my Raptors. This is Respawn Scuttle, so that would also give me level 6. I do have quite a bit of gold, that's my problem here. It's my problem with the overstay, but we'll see. Q, moving. Scryer. Well, they have the vision right there, but it might be okay. I know, I know. Dude, not having my smites up really sucks, huh? Auto Q. Um, just one Void Grub would give me level 6, but we have an Akali problem and I need to spend my gold. Let's reset. Ow. I'm surprised that Scuttle doesn't give me level 6, with how much we've been fighting, too. Noon Quiver, Longsword, Ruby Crystal. Noon Quiver gives you AD and attack speed, as well as that extra damage on hit. And all Nocturne's damage to the camp is through his auto attack, so it's a super efficient item for him. The Tunneler here will give us HP, and then on completion, 55 AD, 20% attack speed, 300 HP. As well as 30 ultimate ability haste. And whenever you ulti with the experimental hex plate, you gain 35% attack speed, which is crazy enough. And then 15% bonus movement speed for 8 seconds. That is so much. Alrighty, let's ulti right here. Ulti. E. Auto. Auto. Q. Auto. 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 <laughs> the faster you spend your first ulti, the faster it comes up again. 145 on our ulti right now, but it's only gaining the only like haste we have for it is through the ultimate hunter So on your second ulti Whenever you complete the experimental hex plate, which you can if you farm correctly like this That's when it really gets juiced for nocturne So next step clean up these camps clear towards topside and as we do all this Afterwards, we can try for the Void Grubs. If we can't do those, we can reset for Dragon. But we're super juiced, especially compared to Mr. Tarek Jungle, who somehow has 46 CS. They buff the jungle pet so, like, shit junglers can somehow farm well now. And I see a lot of shit junglers, but, like, of course, they just don't do anything interesting. A Tarek Jungle player is not going to blow your mind, you know? He's just going to walk around and maybe get some kills, maybe not. Looks like they're doing Void Grubs, and that's okay. We don't have ulti, so we don't have to contest. It's like so late for the first spawn of those two that it doesn't matter one way or another. They get a little bit of XP. Finish up my camps level 7 and to the bot side. We can now play for the dragon on bot side. Gwen has Ninja Tabby, and from what I've learned, Ninja Tabby are super, super strong against Nocturne. Because with this experimental hex plate, right, it doesn't give us like extra damage. It just gives us a lot of attack speed. So yeah, we need we can smack really fast, but it, you know, <laughs> if they have Ninja Tabu, we're smacking for like 80 damage. You know how many times I need to hit a thousand HP Gwen to kill her with 80 damage? A lot. Alrighty, we can do our first ulti here with experimental hex plate. Now we have 30 ultimate haste. So once we cast this one, it'll be up much sooner. On to Senna, she doesn't have an escape. Q, W, E, auto. She instantly died. <laughs> Alrighty, push the wave and then we go do dragon with our friends. And just like that, our ulti is up in 1 minute and 30 seconds. So much faster. So much crazy faster with the experimental hex play. And the more ultis you have on Nocturne, the more value. Smite. And back to the camps. Hurry up. Hurry up. Are you paying attention? Get to the camps. They need to die. Why? Because I gotta get to the top side. Why? Because 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 I need to farm the camps. Why? So I can get strong. So I can so I can ult the bad guy. Run. We're gonna be maxing our E second. Increases the fear duration and the damage dealt. The spell shield, you can get bonus attack speed, but listen, man, we have enough attack speed as it is. We have so much from this first item, and then we get a lot more from our lethal tempo as well. Ideos. Nice, bot lane's owning.
So instead of pathing towards golems here, these put you way on the top side and then it takes you pretty long to move around here. I'm just gonna enter the river. The scuttle's up and I also have my ulti if anyone missteps. If the Gwen's good, she can cast her W and then I can't cast my ult on her. Oh, she already cast her W, dumb. Ulti, moving. Q, W, E, auto, auto, nice. Like, you would never be able to do that with old Nocturne, that's the thing. Don't fight this guy. He's a time waster, care. There's no mid laner. Ah, yeah, 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 just leave, just leave. We don't have to do this. Push the wave, there's just no doing it, man. I already reset. But you would never be able to do that sort of play where we ulted bot lane, took dragon, farm, 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 ult top. You just get so much juice with this. So we have 30 ultimate haste with that, and then we have 19 with ultimate hunter. Already, I'm not buying boots early. I've learned my lesson here. We can do black cleaver or we can do eclipse. We need one or the other to give us good damage. Their champions are pretty squishy. I'm gonna go with eclipse. So long sword, long sword. I'll buy boots and a glowing moat. Glowing moat gives us our only ability haste. So with five ability haste, we also reduce the ulti's cooldown by a little bit. Whenever you have no ability haste, just simply getting any um, is pretty impactful. Given this is only 5, but listen, it turns into 15 on completion of Eclipse. Eclipse is pretty much the same item. You land on the bad guy, deal more damage, and get a shield. But it's a lot of AD, that's what this item is now. You don't get the lethality. Let's move into bot lane. 10 seconds on my ulti, but I need distance. I need distance to land this bad boy. Oh, nice. Ulti onto Vayne. Q, E, smite. Oh, free delivery. Two for one special. Honey? Yeah, yeah, they're having the two for one special in the bot lane. Do you want Senna or Vayne? I don't care, I'll eat either. Alrighty. Every time I order Senna, she just eats my Vayne anyways. Well, the Void Grubs are up, but like, we do not care. Because with 14, at 14 minutes, the... Rift Herald spawns, and it despawns those Void Grubs unless someone is on them. So, and the Rift Herald takes a long time to do. Now, okay, he took the Void Grubs just in time, huh? The Rift Herald takes a long time to do, so as I'm farming my camps up towards it, I don't really have to worry that Tarek's on it immediately. It's a lot harder to solo, because whoever Rift Herald is hitting, they take reduced, they deal reduced damage. So let's hit this Scryer. Bang. Let's see if he's on that. He's not, but I don't have ulti to contest top, so we'll keep farming. 108 CS to Terex 81. And don't forget that we've taken a billion objectives and got three kills and four assists as well. Weird that they take the top turret, I'll be honest. Fiora was super juiced. Excuse me, are you... Nope. And then again, that Rift Herald is going to take him a while to do. I can finish my camps and then move to the play. If you preemptively skip your camps as Nocturne, you're a loser and you suck, okay? Help! Moving. Waiting for my Jason Nami. Moving. Wow, oh, Rift Herald's all the way here. Cute. Already our Rift Herald. Auto, 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 W, auto, Q. It's fine if they come contest us, we win the fight. Nice. Let's go ahead and reset, spend our gold. Wow, I have the whole Eclipse. Nice. So the reason we need Eclipse or Black Cleaver is because both give us percentage damage. Eclipse gives us a percentage increase on our physical damage. And then also, the Black Cleaver shreds their armor. So, you need one or the other. You can get both. Alrighty. I don't want to ult in just yet. Ulti. Q, E, W, auto, auto, auto. That was easy. Don't get hit by her E. I got hit by her E. Auto, Q, auto. I'm dead. That storm surge is so annoying, I'll be honest. I could have flashed her ulti too, that's my bad. <laughs> 
I forgot. I forgot. Akali has her funny storm surge. But I'm level 11 to Terex 8, so it's not like you can really slow me down at this point. We're at the point of no return where we take off, and the enemy never catches up. So from here, magic damage, magic damage, magic damage. Um, I could go Mercs, but they don't have CC. I could go Ninja Tabby, but they don't exactly have a lot of on hit. So I'll just get a Ruby Crystal and figure it out later. Whenever they have so much mixed damage, which will be the case for most games in the like start of the season here, HP is your best friend. Both Experimental Hexplate and Eclipse both give us HP. And as a third item, I could just go Black Cleaver. It's going to be my best. Usually I go Sterax, but in this case, I can do this. Now Gwen's pretty tanky for me, but I do want to see if I have enough damage for her. Ulti up in four seconds. We can run her down though. Q. Nami E will slow her as well as my red. Oh! That's more sustained than I want to deal with right now. Okay, that's fine. We got Terra Culti, so now we can just re engage. I'll drop Rift Herald Bot, and then we'll play right here. This is fine. We can win. We have Brand coming, guys. E. Moving. W. Auto, auto, Q. Ulti. Auto, 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 auto. Nice. Where I got behind the Akali when she was in her shroud, it fears her away from me. So since it was away from me and her shroud, bang, we can actually hit her. Let's hit this turret and then reset. It'd be too much to walk back to the camps. Remember to use your Q when you're hitting the turret. You get more AD. Rift Herald is bugged out, huh? Push, push. Oh, oh, you're wasting her HP. Leave. Leave. Rift Herald doesn't know what to do, huh? I could do Boots Lucidity. Let's just get these components. Because with Phage, this gives me movement speed when I hit the enemy. You really don't need tier 2 boots on Nocturne, huh? I land on the bad guy and I stay on top of the bad guy. We slow them with our red smite and we also get movement speed with the Eclipse. So now, we're waiting for Dragon to spawn. So I'll clean up what camps are left and whenever the enemy makes a mistake as we enter the mid game, that's when we look for an ulti. Whereas the mistakes are kind of forced in the early game, the enemy needs to take turrets, they need to farm, they need to push, etc, etc. Now in the mid game, it's up to you to choose good ultis, and this is where Nocturnes fall off the face of the earth because they just keep ulting whatever they see. Especially if you're reaching for an ulti when the enemy's far back, when they're near their turret. You don't have to do that. You want to wait for the enemy to be... What? Huh? What do you think we're waiting for? I'll give you the opposite. We're not waiting for them to be playing safe under their turret. What are we waiting for? That's right. We're waiting for them to commit to a bad play, for, to a bad position. This guy's in the river. He can't be in the river. Smack. God, so much damage. I can flank Gwyn right here. Warding totem. Q. Auto. E. Auto. 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 Smite. Auto. 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 Dude, my damage is good. She even had Ninja Tabby. Being a level up on the enemy is so strong this season, I swear. I guess we do Baron. W. Oh, it didn't block an ability, so I don't get the bonus attack speed. We want to finish this instead of turning. Smite. Nice. Uh, Baron gives you a shit ton of XP whenever you kill it. So whenever you get that, you can then start skipping camps for tempo. So you have the XP, you want to skip your camps, move on to the map, and then get another ulti. Kindle Gem, Longsword. Let's get out there, swap the blue trinket. You want to swap the blue trinket at level 9, but I guess I forgot. So onto the map here, we skip Gromp, it's just get into the river. Our ulti is up. <laughs> Our ulti's never down. Uh, we have 15 ability haste from the Eclipse, and we'll also get some from Black Cleaver. Ulti, moving. Now this is a reach, but I'm super fed. Okay. And as you can see, reaching sucks. The enemy flashes away. 
12 seconds on Dragon. And why does it suck? Well, now the enemy can look for a play. And if their play is successful, my champion, like, doesn't do anything in the meantime. Phew. Well, uh, Kali's in, you know. Okay. Works out this time. Their ultis are wasted. Fiora's pushing. But, you know, I shouldn't have used my reaching ulti. I could ult in as they start the fight like this, and then I easily, easily mop them up. Phew, auto. Hey, guys, my ulti's back up. Ulti. This lets me land next to the Nexus, and then we just kill the Nexus. Final score one or four, one and nine. Not too bad. Enemy tear keeps it or makes it easy for me, but you can see that's the Nocturne Juice this season. Whether we're on blue or red side, path towards those Void Grubs, and you're gonna be hard pressed to not hit level six way earlier. And if anything goes right, then you're gonna be in a good position to have the hex the experimental hex plate before your second ulti is up already final damage dealt 1100 i'll see you guys in the third game and i hope that you're learning a bit about nocturne already peace who up right click in their camps huh who up scared to queue up in the new season because they might lose what are you four years old man uh, i might lose do you know that the game's as chaotic as it's going to be you won't even remember the games that you played these first two weeks. Play 80 games. And you'll have a way better idea than the guy that's like, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna wait till things aren't as chaotic. Shut up. Just get in there. Because the most important part at the start of the season is figuring out that one right move. And the way you find out the one right move is by doing a thousand wrong ones. And then that one thing that hits, shebang. You got it. So we're here. We're on Nocturne. Um, and... Since we're on blue side, we're super juiced. So here's going to be our path. We're going to do raptors, golems, red. Wolves, gromp, blue, scuttle. Raptors, golems, reset. And then as we reset, we're level, f we're close to level 5 at least. And then the void grubs will spawn around then. And that's where Nocturne has more access to XP than he used to. Getting these void grubs, even just getting one of them, is going to give you quite a bit of XP. And that XP is going to allow you to hit level 6 sooner. And Nocturne, that's the whole juice. We're trying to hit level 6 as soon as possible. So that's why we farm these minor camps like this, just like old times, but now we have access to those Void Grubs, at least if you path towards them. You can path towards that dragon early, but if you're not stronger than the enemy jungle, or not good at skirmishing in the early game, which Nocturne is not, especially against ranged champs, then it's probably going to be a bad look. For the runes, we have Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Coop, Triumph also changed, restoring more HP based on your missing health. So 5% of your missing health and 2.5 of your max health. So now whenever we go in and we do an engage, if we take a lot of damage, as a bruiser champ you will, and just barely survive, it's really going to work out a lot better for us. Because you will get 5% of that missing health back. Especially if you have some sustain built in. And then Eyeball Collection Ultimate Hunter. If you've watched any of my Nocturne videos, you'll know that Ultimate Hunter is the true juice on Nocturne. If you have more ultis, you have a better life. Free boots do not compete at all with having more ultis. Eyeball Collection giving us more AD, which is generally just more damage. That's easy. And then for the jungle item, we have the Red Smite that will deal more damage and slow the enemy when we land on them. Since we don't have the Stride Breaker as our first item anymore, we don't have access to a slow outside of red buff and the red smite. But I don't mind that as Nocturne. I like getting the red smite. Adding more burst and then the slow too, just our initial engage, is way more useful than having, like, say, a ruby crystal's worth of HP from the green smite in comparison. For our first item here, we'll be going with Experimental Hexplate. This is a new item that gives Nocturne everything he's ever wanted. Increase clear speed with the Noon Quiver. Increase tankiness on second recall with Tunneler. And then on completion, 
Oh my god, then we're super juiced. Then the truth really comes out. Where we get 30 haste for the ultimate. That is more haste for our ult than we could have ever gotten in Season 13 in the early game. Add that on top of the ultimate hunter, and we're going to be able to be spamming out a whole bunch of ultis. Alright, let's get the scuttle crab. I'm going to save my E so that I can cross through mid and have a better gank. Auto Q smite. Here I come. So here, as we finish the clear, we take that scuttle crab, ward the the raptors, and then look for a cross through on mid. This gank doesn't have to be successful. E, W, auto, 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 Q, auto, auto, I'll be fine. Auto, 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 flash, auto, moving, auto, 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 Q, close. No, where you guys come from? <laughs> got roamed on by bot lane at four minutes. Oh man, since I die, I don't get to buy the noon quiver. Back to my camps. So we're gonna clear our camps up towards that um, the void grubs, dude. This is supposed to be a little fun little play. Doesn't have to be an all in like that, Mr. Fizz. Oh jeez. Oh gosh. Mid lane is over. Uh -uh. Gonna go ahead and preemptively mute this guy. So we clear our camps back up to the Void Grubs, and again, it's all about getting the XP on those. But if we did our double full clear, right, we cross through mid, and then do our Golems and the Raptors, and then we're gonna be much closer to the Noon Quiver than we would otherwise. On champs like Belveth, that's why I run Futures Market. Hi, Dios. Anyways. Looks like Lily is skipping our camps, that's good. So now we're level 5, and as we enter the top side, I could choose to skip my camps for the Void Grubs, but my top laner is dead right now. So I'm gonna do the- I'm gonna start the Wolves and then see if I can contest. No, the- the damn Void Grubs, the mid laner's trolling, no! No, he sucks and he's trolling. Okay. Well, Seraphine and Fizz have swapped spots here. See if I can't find the noob. So you can smite one of these. Take them away. Q, auto, E, moving. You get movement speed. Auto, auto, W, auto, auto. Damn. I'm not going to be able to catch them. That guy's too fast. Ouch. Let's clean up the gromp and then reset. If we do one more camp, we get level 6. So we got one of the Void Grubs, and like I said, that gives you quite a bit of XP. And with that, gets you closer to level 6. If any play goes your way, then you won't even have to do another camp like this to have access to the ulti. Even though this guy's trolling too, let's just keep playing it out here. At the very least, I can farm midwave. At spots like this too, all you have to do is just keep playing your game. It's nothing too serious. This is all out of our control, this guy farm or this guy feeding and whatnot what's in my control is to keep farming my camps and then ulting when the enemy makes a mistake the gameplay stands stays exactly the same there's nothing to mix up here i know players get super mixed up whenever oh my god my ally's inting oh my god i gotta i gotta farm midwave not me man back to my respawning golems it's fine noon quiver this increases our clear speed giving you additional 20 physical damage on your auto attacks onto the camps and then we're building into Tunneler next, which is simple. It's 250 HP and 15 AD, and it's not bad either. I really like how it's just a whole bunch of stats for us. Moving. Wow, Lilia didn't chase. Um, Draven has Ghostblade, but I think it's okay. I think I can kill him once I'm in range. Ulti. Q, E, W, auto. Auto, auto, auto. Nice, we got a shutdown. Let's go ahead and ward the dragon. All the failures do dragon after they mess up the damn Rift Herald. I don't have a mid laner. I'm gonna farm my camps. What am I thinking? Dude, Vladimir is such a juice champion right now, too. Ay ay ay. Farm my camps quick. I have a feeder on my team. Experimental hex plate's not that expensive either, so as we finish our full clear here, we'll be within range of purchasing it.
Right, so we use that first ulti. Your first ulti won't benefit from any ability haste or anything, because nothing that we build gives us haste. All that we have is that ultimate hunter to rely on. So the first ulti will always be about a two minute cooldown. But the faster you cast it, the faster you use it, the faster it comes up again. And by the time it comes up again, you should have the experimental hex plate if you're playing the game well. If you're farming correctly and doing anything right without miraculous miracle disasters, then you'll be on pace to get the experimental hex plate regardless of what your teammates do. Around the time of your second ulti. Well, the void grubs are coming up here. I'm gonna save my smite, finish this off, and then reset. Get the experimental hex plate, and then back onto the map. Okay, so they trade. I can clean up mid wave. And then we want to hold on to the warding totem. You want vision around these areas as you fight for the, the objectives like dragon and the early void grubs. But you, if you do the Void Grubs, you have to concede that you're probably not going to contest Dragon. You have to give one for the other, usually. Unless your champion's super juiced. Nocturne's not super juiced like that in the early game. Alrighty, so it looks like Lilia enters the river. I'll be in a 1v3, effectively. Okay, Vladimir goes bot, actually. Not bad. Ah, oh, really bad Q. Sorry. Auto, E, auto, auto, auto. W, auto, auto, Q, kiting. Moving. Thanks to the ulti. Auto, smite, auto. Flash, auto, auto. Q. Q. E. I'm dead. We did that okay, but it could have been better. But just like that, 120 seconds on our ulti is super good. That's a minute and 30 seconds on each ulti. So we can just start blasting those off. The, game, the pace of the game is a lot faster, and you really feel that. With an item like this, and then also with <laughs> fighting around the objectives. And uh, the mid lane is 0 and 6 at 10 minutes. You know, that's a pretty fast pace. That's record numbers right there. Keep it up, Fizz. So as we return to the bot side, it's a matter of doing like two camps. And then I have my ulti again. Uh, that's not going to be enough. I'm coming. Seraphine baby, run to me. W, E, Q, auto. This wave is mine, boys. Sorry. I gotta get juiced. They got the Void Grubs. Somehow I'm level 8 to Lilia's level 7, though. Probably because I did more of my camps. Let's get this turret plate. Now, where she did Void Grubs, I could try to go into her jungle. Nocturne just doesn't have enough movement speed and mobility like that in the early game. So instead, I'll look for the camps here. And just like that, my ulti is up. Looks like Jin's gonna push in Draven, but then that wave will bounce. If the Pantheon returns bot, then I'll have an easy ulti on the bot lane. If I'm lucky, these golems will give me level 6. Or level 9, sorry. Schmack. Yes. Ulti. Q. E. W. Oh. Nice. Hello, friend. Smite. Moving. Nice, he used his W. Ow. Just give me a sec. My friends are coming. Oh, sorry. Weird turret range, huh? W, Q, E. Okay, that's all I got. I'm out of here. Ow. Q. Outplayed. Draven doesn't have ulti. He used it on the last engage. I'm going to reset, spend my gold, even though I could walk to my camps. Vladimir could kill me there, and I got 1,700 big ones. Oh, Draven's ulti. Okay, okay. Um, Merc Treads, and then into Black Cleaver. Ruby Crystal and a Longsword. We're still just a little bit away from level 9, so we can't get the blue trinket just yet. That sucks. We do have quite a bit of options for a second bruiser item. You want to look at the AD and HP items rather than the lethality items. The lethality items, if you're not building a lot of them, do not go together as well anymore. Damn, he took my blue side. So, it would be things like Titanic Hydra, Sundered Sky, Spear of Sojin. 
Spear of Sojin now empowers your ability damage, which Nocturne doesn't do. It's all about his auto attacks. Sundered Scar- What is this guy thinking? I wish your Vladimir wasn't behind you. I would kill you to death. This guy doesn't have a clue though, huh? huh? Moving, ulti. Q, W, E, auto, 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 auto. Run! Pantheon's coming to kill me. Well, they've taken all my camps, but the faster I reset to topside, the better. We got Rift Herald coming up. Rift Herald spawns at 14 minutes. Every single game. No matter what. Um, yeah, I'll do Phage and then a Ruby Crystal. Phage now gives you movement speed for hitting the enemy, like old Hearthbound Axe. But the Kindle Gem would have given, given us 10 Ability Haste, which inevitably gives us more ultis. Okay. We don't have any Ability Haste purchased just yet. That's where it's kind of weird. So just 10 Ability Haste would be pretty significant. Alrighty, they're going to get that Rift Herald no matter what. It's kind of a consequence of the soul lanes going 4 and... 4 and 12. Well played. I don't know, man. Every time I log in, my allies just feed. So does everyone else's, man. Figure it out. Cue the fuck up and carry your game. Shut up. Thank you. Noob alert. Well, ulti in 14. I have nothing to play for on the bot side, so I might as well stay top. Run. Cute. Weird that that would be warded, that's for sure. Moving. E. Auto. 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 Q. Auto. Auto. Run! Oh, I didn't get my W off. Shit. See ya. He healed so much, too. Where he has Ninja Tabby, until I complete the Black Cleaver, I'm not dealing that much damage. Alright, let's forfeit. Slam. That's one tanky guy right there. Yep, even if you don't know what the new items do, basically if you look at the components, right? If they have more items than you do, they're winning. God, Vladimir has so many more items than I do. Kindle Gem. Ooh. Well, Draven, you never let me down before. Please push into Fizz. There you go. My ulti's almost in range. God, he just used his flash too, damn. A bunch of noobs in my jungle. Whenever you start losing, uh, everyone shows up into your jungle in Season 14. It's so much more accessible. Q. E. Auto. W. Auto. 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 Q. I'm dead. <laughs> I can't even kill the support. He has Ninja Tabby. Everyone has Ninja Tabby. I can't win. I need the full Black Cleaver completed before I deal damage again. Because as a bruiser, it's like you set up your team for damage, and then you both hit them. The enemy's too fed, and they built defensive. We lose. It's over. Your turret has been destroyed. If you smite the Rift Herald when they're in it, it will pop them out of the Rift Herald. Alright, let's see if they split up right here. If one is isolated, then I can kill. Nice, Draven's isolated. Q, W, E, auto, 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 auto. <laughs> I take so many autos! Experimental Hexplate is good and all, but damn, I need to get to that Black Cleaver sooner. Flash, auto. Hmm. Yeah, we will not be buying Merc Treads. We will be building Black Cleaver as our second item and having no boots on Nocturne.
All right, guys, the score is 16 to 27. Do you want to forfeit? The score is 16 to 27. FF, question mark? Oh, my ulti's up in 14. Since Aatrox moves like that, then he definitely knows I'm here. Take Fizz out and the score's even. Look at Vlad items. Score's not even. LOL. Vladimir has death cap and a damn. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Q, W, E. Auto, auto. Auto, auto, auto. I'm dealing 100 damage per auto. Which I have a lot of autos, don't get me wrong, but like, it's taking forever. See ya. I got the black cleaver, boys. It's time to deal some damage. So, for the other bruiser items here, we need to survive. So, it's definitely going to be Sterax. Sterax now giving you tenacity as well. So, 400 HP, 750 shield, 20% tenacity, 40 AD. And whenever you build Black Cleaver, you also can't build the Last Whisper anymore. So, it eliminates that build path. Which is honestly kind of interesting. Makes you really commit to one build or another. So once you get that black cleaver, bang, you're a bruiser. Wah! No red buff. Put a split push bot, even if I group up, my team sucks and I can't win, so. There's a lot more juice for me to get in the side lane here. I get more gold and I get more XP. My teammates get to suffer the consequences of feeding. Enemy does Baron as well. There's no way we can contest. The Vladimir is way, 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 way too strong. Oh! Q, W, E, auto, 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 smite, auto. Where my damage at? Moving. Q, auto, 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 e, auto. I don't even have mana for E, damn. I mean, that damage is a lot better. Onto a giant spell, Riftmaker, Leandri's Lilia. That damage isn't too bad. Because she has 300, 650. She has 900. She has 1,000 HP from items. Meanwhile, we only have 700. Uh, we have 950. Okay, we're pretty much even. But then these give her stacking damage. But then she has to lane the Q. Amazing. But don't FF. No, no, no. Stay in the game. So that is a problem with Experimental Hexplate. It gives you more ultis, but you're definitely lacking damage, especially when the enemy purchases things like Ninja Tabby. I'm smacking, I'm smacking, I'm smacking, but where's my damage? So it has to be the combination of my damage with my allies' damage, and also my CC with my allies' damage, and I didn't have a single ally that game. Final damage dealt 1,700. Alrighty, GG, see you in the next one. Alrighty, welcome back. Game three, and the final game. Against Briar, she could try to do my blue gromp. It'd be a pretty bad option, but you never know. So, put the funny ward right there, and then we'll be doing the same path, starting the raptors and then clearing up. <clears throat> For the ulti targets, we have the Talon, we have the Sinna, and the Zeri. Zeri's pretty mobile, so, especially with these long walls, like, she could E from here to here. 
So it's kind of kind of lame where she could just jump away. You always want to wait for that. But we will be playing for the Void Grub XP again. I just watched a player too where he did two of the Void Grubs and then just left and the two camps and it seems a lot faster than doing that third one. And then off the two camps he got level 6 and I'm like let's try that out as well. He, he got to fight quite a bit too but with Nocturne it's like let's just get one more camp, skip the third Void Grub and see what happens. Amazing. That's a new world record there Kog'Ma Season 14. I know bot laner's feed but two minutes and three seconds in, well played. Step one, lock and full clear. Step two, watch the lanes die. Step three, get level six and ult. Enjoy. I've seen quite a bit of comments too on the Nocturne videos. They say, put two points into Q and then it clears faster than E. One, I don't believe you. Two? Surely it's not that much faster. Three, if there's any shenanigans whatsoever and the enemy's taking your blue side, you lose. If you get invaded and you don't have E, you lose. It's just a, like, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'll take my 80 magic damage on the E. Surely this is better. And then technically the fear gives us more HP because the camp won't be hitting us. Because I finished my clear here, I see that top lane's pushed in, and mid lane is pushed in. Either one honestly seems fine for ganks, but as per usual, we'll probably just cross through mid. Prior shows bot with 16 CS, so we already have the lead, where she has red buff as well. Whoa, Nelly! It's a lot of flashes, boys. They're gonna be moving, moving. Oh, you're kidding, man. Oh, this guy has too many jumps. This will show me to skip scuttle, huh? W. Auto. Q. I didn't expect Briar to be here. She has 16 CS, so... She's done that scuttle crab. Well, this kind of sucks. I didn't do my top scuttle. With both mid laners flashing, you'd think there'd be some juice, but... Where the Katarina plays away from me, she dies over here, and then gives Talon that jump? <laughs> awesome. Outstanding work. What's up? It's my ally suck45. I'm locking in full clear and watching them all die. Zero one on the top lane, zero one on the mid lane, an impressive one and two on the bot lane. <clears throat> but Bob, what do I do when my lanes are feeding? Hit those funny camps. And stop calling me Bob. As we reset to the top side, even though I skipped that scuttle, maybe? If she doesn't check it, I can still get it. And then that will give me level 5, or the wolves can give me level 5. Hi, Dios! I would have had the damn Noon Quiver, though. Don't forget that control ward as we reset to the Void Grubs here. And then, I think really with the Void Grubs that they're like the AoE camp. Nocturne has AoE, hits multiple targets with the passive, with the Q. So that makes the Void Grubs easier to take. Dragon, very much a single target camp. One thing I've noticed though, with any of the auto attack champions, they seem to have a disadvantage. Compared to the AP champions, I feel like the AP champions just one-shot these Void Grubs. Where they have 25 armor and magic resist, I don't know what the deal is. I think it's just those AP items in the early game, it is what it is. Mr. Yone, level 6. Okay. He's gonna build up that Q3. Q, E, W, auto. So, this thing followed me all the way, okay. So she takes one of them, that's okay, no big deal. And then she knows that my top laner would be here. Keep hitting this, we have smite. Where's the other one, dude? Why is it over there? <laughs> what the fuck? Come on back now. Come on, bounce on back here. <laughs> <laughs> well, mission accomplished. We got the two Void Grubs and then back to the camps. Now the other guy got level 6 off three camps. So we'll see if it's the same for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Tom Kinch is the River King. 
Maybe that Void Grub and Tom Kinch have done something in the past. And Briar's already in the bot side. 38 CS. Nice! I'm gonna hit level 6 off these wolves. That is not bad at all. Okay, so now we're cooking. Bink, bink, bink. Moving. Level 6. Who wants to die, huh? I have a couple long swords and I'm pissed off. Oh, not my, my bottling wants to die, I forgot. Nice. Let's try to find some noobs in the river here. Because now... Oh, Q, E, W, auto, auto, auto. That was easy. I can't believe she tried to start the dragon. Briar, you have a TM app. Baby, wake up. Smite. Well, so much for killing the noobs with my ulti. I'll go ahead and clean up my camps and reset. Whoa! What is the deal? E. Moving. Don't get the fear off. I'm fine. He's not killing me right there. He also has a Tiamat and a Doran's Blade. I don't get it, guys. They're both playing Assassins and not building damage. Amazing. Briar didn't clear the dragon fast enough. Talon didn't have enough, simply enough AD to kill me. Amazing. And then since we survive, with Nocturne's passive, you can just stay on the map and keep farming. The hex plate's pretty far away, so it's not like we're gonna stay for stay long enough to get that. It's mostly about getting the XP right now. Is I or Zeri just used her dash? My E cooldown is up in four. Damn, but they walk away. So instead of going through tri brush, it's likely that tri brush is warded. I'll just move through lane and see if I can't get an ulti onto Senna. Senna's a super easy target. Q, W, E, auto. And that's that. That'll be our first ulti. And as always with Nocturne, the sooner you cast that first ulti, the sooner the second one is up. So it's a two minute cooldown. In the meanwhile, we can just farm our camps and wait things out here. Noon Quiver, Tunneler, and back onto the map. 600 gold. Let's just go ahead and get boots. We probably won't regret it. The dangerous part with building boots is that you might not complete your whole item before next recall. I can pretty much guarantee that I'm going to make 400 gold before my next recall to get the experimental hex plate. Me Nocturne, me kill camp. Me just kill bad guy, me better than him. Well, Talon trying to gank bot, watch out man, you don't deal damage. Legit so little damage, that took so long. Trade one for one. Not bad. Wah. Swing and a miss, huh? Yon's gonna have his W. If I had to guess, he wins. Yon just exits, huh? Welp, 30 seconds on my ulti. If I had to guess, Briar is topside since we didn't see her at all on the bot side. So what I can do here is just maneuver around, bring it around town, cue that funny... Oh, we missed. W, E, auto, Q. Nice, sir. Uh, to the Void Grubs, boys. My ulti's back up. Now, Briar has a better fight into me on the Void Grubs. Nice, and their support reset bot. You always want to keep that in mind whenever the Void Grubs are up. If the enemy's support comes and yours doesn't, you're going to be feeling it. Still feeling pretty comfortable on these. Moving. W. Okay, we're good. Wow, she hit. Oh, she hit Katarina. Oh, more Void Grubs for me. Now, she's pretty low, so she can't even approach these. I'm going to save my Smite. We get all three of these, so that's more XP for me. Now they know to back off. Alrighty. Let's finally reset. Get that Hexplate. And now, with the Hexplate, we have 30 Ability Haste on our ulti. Bang. And that's going to make it where we are a whole lot stronger. We're easily going Ninja Tabby. Ninja Tabby Longsword back onto the map. 
So if you cast your ultimate and then buy the item, you're not going to benefit from the ultimate haste. But now that we have it, and we have three stacks on the ultimate hunter, our ulti is on an 86 second cooldown. That's a minute and like 26 seconds. That's so crazy. At 11 minutes in. Alright, let's farm some camps, get level 9, and then play for that dragon. Skipping our top side camps. It's kind of harder to look for an ulti bot or mid lane whenever they're pushed in. You know, my my laners are bringing it back. That's one thing about early season. Even if your laners die early, it doesn't show you one thing or another. Oh! Ulti, moving. W, E, auto. Q, smite, flash, auto, auto, auto. Alrighty, I don't want to... Oh! I don't want to be there too long or I take too many turret shots. Run! Nice. We're living. I'm getting out of here. No matter what I do in the river, she wins. So, let's recall. The cloth armor came in handy, huh? Moving. Oh, jeez. Not a two-for-one special. Not today. Bong. Pokemon oh, got nailed, huh? Got absolutely railed. Got absolutely creamed, huh? Ninja Tabby and... I'll get a control word and a blue trinket. Well, the dragon's probably theirs if, they're want, if they want it. But damn, with 40 seconds on my ulti, I can do the red buff and then see if they're on that dragon. And maybe be able to fight. Even though it'd be like 2v3, 2v4 <laughs> with the Katarina, we could still win. She has heart steel. What's up with that? Katarina, don't you know there's, there's the best AP items there's ever been in the game? And you chose to build tank. Impressive. Well, they take dragon, but that makes us even in dragon. The Rift Herald spawns at 14 minutes, but that is a two-man issue. To soul, the Rift Herald takes forever. So generally, I'm just farming, and then once the play finds us, then we can participate. The Briar's pretty tanky, but that's okay. Titanic Hydra early, it's like... Oh! Q, moving. Ulti. Hello! if I do. And my ulti will be up in a minute and 20 seconds. Don't. Don't. Tom Kinch, don't. Come on, man. What are you doing, man? Don't make me ward for you, man. I got places to be, man. I guess Briar's not here, do you? You know better than me. Did get the turret. What? Noob alert. She has no W. How'd she get over here? The blast gun? Whoa, Katarina dealing no damage. So both Ta <coughs> Talon and Katarina built no damage. Impressive. If she uses her W, she dies. So I just stand around here, trying to wait. See if she wants to do that. She does not. Alrighty, to the Rift Herald. The Tom Kench has nothing else to do, and Briar is receiving that wave, so she would have to enter the river here. By that time, my ulti would be up. I'm gonna save my W. So with Rift Herald, whoever it hits last deals reduced damage to the Rift Herald. So we want Tom Kench to take the Rift Herald so that we deal more damage. We got the DPS. Moving. And this guy has to die, huh? We're gonna wait for his Q3. And we're gonna follow. E, W, Q. Moving. Wait for the ulti. Wait for the ulti. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset. You get the empowered recall from the Rift Herald. And then anyone who gets an assist also gets an empowered recall. Caulfield, Warhammer, Longsword, and back onto the map. Caulfields gives us our first bit of ability haste. So we already had the 30 ultimate haste, but then 10 ability haste is gonna... Whenever you have no ability haste, getting any is more beneficial. And then that puts our ulti basically at the same time. It takes like two seconds off the ulti. Oh, we have more Qs. Q. 
E, auto, 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 W, auto. Auto, smite, Q. You won't get away from me, partner. Outplayed. Outplayed, I walked at you with my auto attacks. Oh, she has experimental hex plate, I see. That's why she wasn't dealing damage. They forfeited! Okay, GG. GG. As you go into the mid game there, I'm pretty sure it's important to get Eclipse or Black Cleaver. One or the other is going to give you the like important amount of damage that you need to deal as you go into the mid game. With any bruiser, that like Nocturne, you need two items, that's your spike. And you choose it with either Experimental Hexplate, into Eclipse or into Black Cleaver. Because Eclipse gives you quite a bit of AD and a little bit of HP, as well as that initial burst. It gives you higher initial burst. But then the Black Cleaver gives you movement speed when you hit them, HP, and then shreds their armor, which effectively gives you like percentage HP damage. Alrighty, GG. And that'll be it for Nocturne for now. We're, we'll definitely revisit him as the season progresses, but I think that's a solid path to get you started. Clear up towards those funny Void Grubs, get more XP, and then you're going to get level 6 way sooner. And then from there, you have this path of using your first ulti, going back to the camps, farming, resetting, and you'll probably have Experimental Hex played at that point. And at that point, it's just blasting off ultis every 80 seconds. In between the camps, you can do like two camps, ulti, two camps, ulti. And all the meanwhile, too, these objectives will be up. So even if you don't find an ulti on the lanes, you probably have an ulti on the objectives. So, alrighty. Hope uh, this video helped you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.